Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. I'm doing a chart presentation on what is man. Very important question to answer for each of us. So uh, we uh, went to the first chart and we looked at it. And as you can see, my goodness, it's got four eyes on it with four uh, uh, headings. And the first one is being. And then uh, the second one is trying. The third one is resting, and the fourth one is being again. So why did that, why do I make it like that? Well, actually, this whole pre, whole presentation of the I call it the four eyes actually brings is a synopsis of this whole presentation that I do. What is man? Because you, we've got to answer this question about the I, about the self. Okay. So what about the first one? We started there. We started last time, and so we're going to continue on from last time. Started talking about this, this first one, which says being, or underneath that being, it says wrong self. Why am I a wrong self? Actually, we've been invaded by a satanic spirit that's been operating us through the fall. That's why we're all sinners, and we all come short of God's glory, because actually we've been invaded through the fall. Well, like I said, most people do not want to hear that. They don't like to uh, even think of themselves or anybody that's not a Christian as actually being invaded by Satan. But I ask you, ask you, why is there so much war? Why is there so much pride? Why is there so much sin? Why is there so all in humanity if humanity hadn't gone wrong? Humanity has gone wrong. That's why we need a Savior. Now, so we've been invaded by a satanic spirit. Now, let me read you the verse again in Ephesians chapter 2. Hope you have your Bibles. Turn with me as I read this. Now, I'm reading from the King James. I like that the best. That in the New American Standard, I also like that. A lot of the new translations are leaving out some very important things. So I always like to go to these older translations. So you can choose what you like, though, the best. But look at verse 1 of chapter 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So sorry, a person that's lost is already a dead person. Uh, and Jesus says, I didn't come to condemn anybody. I came to save. Why didn't he come to condemn? This says this in John chapter 3. But he says, because everybody's condemned already. They're already condemned. Wow. So... That tells us that we, we're all in a lost condition. We're all without Christ, who, who is the only hope of, our, of us regaining the glory that we lost through the fall. Okay, verse 2. Wherein in times past, that means um, before I was a Christian, how did I walk? How did I live? How did I think? How did I act? So let, let's look at it. Wherein, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world. You mean I didn't walk according to my own thoughts or feelings or how I wanted to, what I wanted to do? No, you really were invaded by a spirit that was really dominating you and causing you to, to walk in your own way, which is the way of a, a sinner, really. According to the prince of the power of the air. So, you see, uh, you're not walking as just a you by yourself, trying to do your own good and trying to refuse to do evil. That's, that's not the truth. You were, you were in bondage to sin, actually. It says that in Romans chapter 6. It says you were a slave to sin before you were a Christian because you were walking according to the prince of the power of air. Well, we know the prince of the power of the air is Satan. The spirit that now works inside the children 
of disobedience. Wow. So there's a spirit invading our vessel and operating us, and we're walking according to the devil's will. My goodness, people. Do you all hear that? Do you know why we have to be born again now? Do we really read our scriptures to see exactly how far we've fallen? And we have. But you see, when we see how far we've fallen, then maybe you can get a glimpse of how high that, God, that Jesus Christ has brought you back to the Father and elevated you above uh, uh, the principalities and powers in all the satanic realm and seated you in him far above uh, uh, anything, any problem, anything in our life. You see, we're meant to live a resurrected uh, life that's ascended life and a throne level life and not, not be fooled by the devil's lies any longer. Because all of our life, we've been living by the devil's lies. We've been living a liar's life, actually. Because we're anybody that does not agree with the fact that we need, we all need Christ. We all need salvation because we're all sinners. It's not that we're a good person and we've done, done good things and made good grades in school and can sing well or even go to church or act religious or none of those things save us. I mean, the Bible says we must be born again of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, you're not even a Christian until you're born again of the Holy Spirit of God. Although Ephesians tells us it's never by works of righteousness. Uh, it's always by grace that we're saved through faith in Christ alone. Okay, but look at how we were before we were saved. Among whom also we, we all had our conversation, in other words, our lifestyle, in times past, in the lust of our flesh. What does that mean, the lust of our flesh? That means I, 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 I'm a needy me. I, I can't get enough to satisfy me. I, I, nothing satisfies me. I'm just like a insatiable hunger, always wanting more, 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 more. Nothing satisfies. That's the lust of the flesh. Always trying to get and never being satisfied. Get get what? Anything that might make me feel better, even drugs or drinking or, or changing uh, uh, marriages or whatever, anything that might make me feel better, but it never lasts. It's never enough. That's the lust of the flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. That means trying to get everything I can to fulfill this neediness or this like um, C.S. Lewis says, heart-shaped vacuum. That's a vacuum means that is it, it can never be filled up. You see, it's empty. I'm empty on the inside. And, and I'm trying to get that filled up with things and relationships and maybe even drugs or, or ambitions or money or on and on and on and on. Everything the world has to offer. And, and desires of the mind, whatever my mind might think that might help me be a satisfied person, which it's impossible for us to be satisfied without Jesus Christ coming into that heart-shaped vacuum and filling that vacuum up with himself. The only Because I was created to contain and express God, I was not created to contain myself, which is just a, a wrong self, which is a satanic self uh, ruled by a master that mastered me and caused me to do his will. Wow. Do we really get that? That we, None of us think that because, see, Satan makes us so proud. We think, well, I'm my own master. I'm, I, I do my own thing. Nobody's my boss. Nobody's my boss. Well, just think of a little baby when it's born. And two years old, by the, by the time it's one years old, it doesn't want you to boss it cries when you say no to it. Okay, so this is the condition of the lost person. Like I said, because it's so hard to take, let me just read you some scriptures that say exactly that. It says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19, that we are spirits in prison, that we're a little spirit. The hum we have a human spirit. That human spirit has been... Um, uh, uh, ha, ha, is in prison because it does, we may not realize it, but we're totally behind bars. We're in prison to a satanic spirit that operates us. We, 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 we think we're doing our own thing, and that, that's not the truth. Number two, 
we contain the spirit of error. That's in 1 John chapter 4. So uh, Jesus said, I came to give you the spirit of truth. I came to give you, after I, after I leave, I'm going to give you the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth will lead you into all truth. You see, and then first John says, we really don't need any man teaching us because the spirit of truth will teach us all things because we have that anointing. If you're a born again person, you don't need to be taught because the spirit of truth can teach you all things. And uh, first John also says we're children of the devil. And uh, first John four says we contain Satan who is in this world. Now we Christians quote this verse, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Well, there's a he in the world. There's a he in us, which is Christ. If you're born again, then Christ is in you. But there's also a he in the world. And that he in the world is a satanic spirit inside the spirit of error, inside of uh, the children of disobedience. And then it says that we have the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. And I just read that. That's Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, Romans chapter 9 says we're vessels filled with wrath. Well, wrath is anger and pride, you see. Well, I always say it wasn't hard for Jesus to prophesy there'd be wars and rumors of wars because what else can a vessels of wrath do but fight with each other? It's true. And, of course, we certainly see that in our world today. And uh, Romans chapter 6 says that we're slaves to sin. You're slaves to Mr. Sin who operates us. And we're going to see it a little bit later that sin actually is a person. Well, so is righteousness. Righteousness is a person living and having his being inside of us. Sin is a person. Uh, this is the person of death. He makes us think we're alive, but we're really dead in trespasses and sins. And I could go on and on and on and read you all those verses, but I think you get the point. We certainly are dead in trespasses and sins. We need to be born again. Even the religious leader, Nicodemus, said to, came by night to Jesus and says, Good master, uh, tell me what I need to do to be saved. And he said, oh, uh, I, I think that was the young, young, rich, young ruler that actually said that. And Nicodemus did say, well, teach me. I know that you're a master, so teach me. And Jesus says, oh, no, you can't be taught. You must be born again with the Spirit of God. You won't have ears to hear or eyes to see if you're not born again of God's Spirit. So that's why people can't really see these truths that the Bible tell, tells us about because I hath not seen nor ear hath heard the things that God has opened to us and only the Holy Spirit can teach us these things. So unless we're born again of the Spirit, we're not really saved. It says that in John chapter 8. Or it says that in Romans chapter 8. Now, now let's go look at the chart again. Now let's look. We see the first eye is wrong self. And a satanic spirit is operating our human self. And we see those verses in Ephesians chapter 1. If we look to the very bottom of that, there's an arrow that goes down. And it shows us how we operate. We're operating as if we're just me. We have no idea that, that there is a spirit operating us that's inside of us. We have no idea of that, none, until, you see, we get miserable enough. If you're miserable enough and somebody comes along and gives you the gospel that Jesus died for your sins and you see yourself as a hopeless sinner, then you, can, you receive Christ. So let's move right on into the next stage. Because in my life, I went forward at a Billy Graham crusade when I was only 18 years old. I knew I was a sinner. I knew I knew, needed Christ, and Christ came into my life. But I had no idea what I had received. I was never discipled. I did go to a little church. Nobody ever told me what happened to me or what salvation really was or how to live the Christian life or, or, or didn't tell me anything. So... I really did have a consciousness that needed to be cleansed from all the old consciousness of self-effort. And ba basically, when I went to a fellowship, all they really told me was to do more, to now that you're a Christian, now come and serve and be, be for Jesus and try to do good things for him. 
which is really the wrong thing to say to a new convert. We've got to understand first what it means that to be born again, what who we were before we were saved, and what it means to have Christ living inside of us. And we need to know what who the Holy Spirit is in, in us, that the Holy, the Holy Spirit himself, uh, the spirit of holiness has come inside of us to indwell us and is our very life. We need to know these things. But I did not know these things, and I dare say most don't. That's why I have this teaching. So the next thing that happened to me was that I moved from being a wrong self, being indwelt by a satanic spirit, just all I did was ever justify myself my whole life. Well, I was not such a bad person. Well, uh, I did I did some good things. You see, that's the way people think. Okay, now we're coming into Christ. I knew that Christ had moved inside of me. I knew that it wasn't by my own works that I could receive him, that he forgave me of all my sins. But I moved right on into this next part, which is called trying. And I call that a deluded self, a deluded self. Now, why do I call it that? Because trying is not <laughs> the function of the human being, you see. We always think that we that Christ, yes, I have Christ, but I've got a big performing me. I've got to perform. I've got to be good. I've got to do more for God. I've got to, I love Jesus with all my heart, but but what can I do to please God, you see? So look down, as we look down, it's diluted because the truth is all the fullness of the Godhead came inside of you in that sea with that little eye right there in the second stage. That's the truth about us. We're in union with Christ, but that's not how we think and that's not how we act. And as a man thinketh, so is he. So how do we think? See, we need a cleansed consciousness. How do we think? We think like this. I've got Christ and a performing me. I, so therefore, I've got to try more, do more, be better, try harder, uh, read the Bible more, uh, any way to keep myself from sinning because I think I'm responsible for keeping myself. I'm responsible for staying, uh, actually, uh, uh, being the Christian that I'm meant to be, that I'm the one responsible. When we don't realize that to get saved in the first place, you're justified by faith. Now, this next stage is really talking about sanctification. How are we sanctified? You see, Christ is my justification in the first place. The second stage is knowing that Christ is my sanctification. He is my holiness. Oh, wow. Wow, that's what we don't know. And that's what God has to prove to us. He has to prove to us how weak we are as Christians. You see, before we were saved, we didn't know how hopeless we were without Christ. Now that we are saved, we really don't know how weak we are as Christians. We don't realize that because we're still so full of our own ideas of who we think we are and how we live the Christian life and how everything still revolves around me, me, me. So actually, we're more self-conscious. We're more performance or behavior-based consciousness than we are Christ consciousness, actually. Uh, so we live a life always thinking about myself. Always, am I spiritual enough? Have I done enough? Am I, should I, I better go to church so I can feel all those same feelings I thought from, felt from the beginning. And then maybe if I feel them enough, then I'll be spiritual enough. No, we've got an awful lot to learn in this stage. Number one, God has to prove to us how weak we really are and how unable we are to live the Christian life. That's what people don't want to believe. And I hardly ever hear it taught. But, you know, I did a whole teaching one time on how we can be like Jesus. Do you realize it says in John that Jesus said of my human self, I can do nothing. The human me can do nothing. I can do nothing. 
Jesus said all the way through the book of John, I don't have my own words. I don't have my own life. I don't have anything of my own as if I'm just me. I'm not just me. All that I do is what the Father does through me. The words that I speak, those are the Father's words. What and but, but you see, how in the world did he learn his human helplessness? And that's very important because the human being is nothing but a simple vessel. Uh, uh, always been a vessel. Bible says in Romans chapter 6 that I've been a vessel of uh, sin or a slave of sin. or And then it also says now that we uh, belong to Christ, we're a slave of sin of righteousness. So we've always been a slave. That's why it's so important to understand what the human is. We've always been a slave. So you see, but it, since I don't know that, I don't understand my humanity. That's why this presentation uh, sh should ring true to your very heart as you hear what the human being really is and how we struggle to understand what that what the human being is, which is nothing but a simple container, a receiver of the truth, not, at a, not a, an achiever. See, we always thought we could succeed by achieving through our life. That's how we've always done it. If I go to school, if I have the right schooling, if I have the right education, if I have the, the right position in life, then I will be a success. Or maybe even at home, if I do it right, if I raise my children right, however you think of your what success means to you, we've always thought of it as by achieving it, by self-achievement, you see. Well, uh, Christianity doesn't work that way. The kingdom of God does not work that way. It does not work by self-achievement. So we need a cleansed consciousness on how we live the Christian life. So the Bible right away tells us the truth. It tells us in Romans chapter 6, it says this. It, uh, it says, there's something more than understanding uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed me from all my sins, and I'm justified by, his, by faith in Christ. There's got, there's got to be more than just understanding my first steps into Christianity. Uh, I have to understand who's going to live the life. Am I going to live the life? apart from who God says I am and try and strive to, to be like Jesus and to be the best I can, am I going to live the life that way? Or am I going to realize that that old self was crucified with Christ, doesn't live any longer, and Christ himself lives in me and can live the Christian life perfectly? And the only way to keep the law is certainly, and one of my good friends says this, the only way to keep the law is to marry the lawyer. Okay, let me read you this in chapter 5 of Romans. It says this, Much more than being now justified by his blood, that's what it means to be saved. You're justified and cleansed by the blood of Christ. That's, that's a fact. We shall be saved from wrath through him. That means the second, what's wrong with me? I'm, I'm angry because I've got Jesus, but still I'm not satisfied. Why? Because there's something more for you to know. Okay, verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, that means there's more than just being justified by faith. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That means saved daily by his resurrected life. I always say, uh, if you're a Christian, you know your sin, your past sins are under the blood. And you know, future is, is heaven, but we don't know how to live right now because we're all trying to do it ourselves when the only person that can really live the Christian life is Christ himself. Because it says we shall be saved, that means daily delivered from sin's dominion, daily. What? How? By his resurrected life inside me. That's why we say, that's why the name of our ministry is Christ Our Life Ministries. You see, he's our life. He's not a part of our life. He is my life. And until you know that, you're going to strive to live the Christian life. So let's go back to that uh, chart again, where we see it's Christ and a great big I. 
And guess what? As long as you think you're a separate I or a separate self, a performing self, then you're going to be under all the shoulds and oughts of the law. I should be better than because you're, you're not living a satisfied, completed life. The, the completed life would know that it's Christ in you that is the completed life, the satisfied whole life of the Godhead living inside of us. When we know that, we won't have a separate self-consciousness, a consciousness where, um, you know, I think everything is up to me. I've got to try harder, strive more, do more, be better. If I, if I read my Bible more, it's all conditional living. If I read my Bible more, if I pray more, if I go to church more, if I feel the spirit more, then I'll be more spiritual. No, as we read from the very beginning, Christ is given, God has given you everything in Jesus Christ. He's, you're not going to be more spiritual by doing, doing, doing. You're going to be spiritual because you're simply receiving the fullness of what God says is true and not what you think is true, not your own idea about it all. So in, in other words, we're going to have to uh, die to all the ways that we think we're to operate as Christians, not by achieving, simply by receiving, simply by taking the truth of what God says and living on it and standing in it. So thank you for joining me, and we're going to come right back again and continue next time. Goodbye. I hope that you are being blessed by The Liberating Secret. If you would like to have for yourself my books, booklets, or any of my TV or radio series, check out our website's bookstore. Our TV shows are also on our YouTube site. And be sure to get The Liberating Secret app for your phone. We have an annual Louisville conference in June, as well as a biannual Woman's Retreat at Polly's Island, South Carolina. Come for a weekend or a week of study, fun, fellowship by the ocean. We also have a weekly Bible study. See our website for times and location. My husband and Scott and I would love to come and share the liberating truth to your fellowship, church, or home group. Please call or contact us through the website. If you would like to donate to our ministry, make your checks out to Christ Our Life Ministries, Post Office Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. Please pray for us, and we will pray God's very best for you.